India won by 5 wickets. We are all hooked to the main picture, but we seem to forget what goes behind the scenes when selecting a cricket team or any sports team for that matter. Have you ever wondered while watching the IPL auctions, why did your team pay a lot of money for a youngster? You might think your team's administration has gone completely bonkers, but months and years of data research goes into selecting a player. From looking into their performances in the domestic leagues like the Ranji Trophy, TNPL, Dilip Trophy, and to their consistency and overall performance. In this episode of One Bat at a Time, we're going to look into how data changed the sports industry and how it made scouting better. The global sports market is expected to grow from $354.96 billion in 2021 to $501.43 billion in 2022 according to researchandmarkets.com. You can see that sports has managed to flourish even after many ideas and businesses have failed. Its astronomical expansion in the recent years has largely attributed to the availability of data. Thanks to availability of data, many great players who might otherwise have to wait for many years are now being recognized. Players like Hardik Pandya, Chahal, Ravindra Jadeja, Ashwin have two significant things in common. Firstly, they are all considered to be match winners for the Indian team. And secondly, their success in IPL has passed track their position in the national squad. Today, they play such a significant role in the team that they cannot imagine the team without them. This further classifies that data science has a major role to play in the victory ratio that's improving recently. For a very long time, data has been at the forefront of sports. There are stats about everything a player could do now. Although the techniques may have evolved, but the fundamental cause has not. Data determines how a sports team plays against a specific opponent on a specific playing surface on a specific nation and even on a specific set of weather conditions. With the amount of data getting generated in sports, you could come up with any statistic and analyze any part of a player's game. The backroom staff, who could be tacticians or analysts, actually rely on sports data analytics more than ever before. And that's primarily because of the fact that analytical data makes it much easier to predict key events. It also helps in making big decisions, especially when a club is trying to buy a big name player. Also, data analytics in sports can be applied to various aspects of the game, not just scouting players. So let's look into that now. Injury predictions. Sports data analytics have become much more predictable because of growing use of wearable technologies in sports. This helps identify which athletes are more prone to injury and fitness staff can maintain an overall balance in their activity levels and if necessary, enroll them in conditioning programs. Analysts can acquire neuromuscular data and store it in data warehouse using various systems and through analytic applications. To spot changes, this data can be monitored over the course of season. Convolutional neural networks can be used to detect deviation. Let me give you an example. You must have noticed that Indian cricket's team coach would rest players like Virat Kohli and Hardik Pandya in series that are against weaker competition. Why is that? Because one, they do not want to risk the player to get an injury in such a match and two, they want to make sure that the players are well rested for a crucial competition say like World Cup. Player Valuations A scout can more accurately assess if a player would be the right match for their team's current system using text-based data analytics and predictive modeling. For a smaller team that needs a leader who will be available throughout the season, a star player who is injury-prone would not be a wise investment. Team Strategy The heat map shows Cristiano Ronaldo's performances over the years. So this particular heat map shows that he was involved all around the pitch in the year or in the season 2010-2011 and in the following season he concentrated more on playing on the wings. So using analytical data and visualization approaches we can confirm that Cristiano prefers to play on the wings and then get back inside. So using analytical data we could figure out the strengths and weaknesses of every single player and form a complete team strategy. And how can we ignore the most discussed aspects of sports analysis, which is betting? People who profess to be sports gurus don't actually play the guessing game. They actually look into the performances of each team in specific playing conditions, weather conditions, and also look into their performances head to head, and then make a calculated decision to bet on one of them. 
We could classify the data used into three types. Number one, physical data. As you might expect, physical data will tell you about players' physical capabilities. For instance, speed, kilometers covered, heart rate, etc. Number two, event data. This category of information will explain what occurs on the ball. Shots, passes, crosses, tackles and other event data falls under this category. And lastly, tracking information. Here, they list down every player's on and off the ball positional coordinates. All of this information together helps the team get better. This chart shows a typical structure of football club's data-driven approach to the modern game. Now let's look into scouting with data-driven approach. How did analytics change scouting? Conventional wisdom doesn't work anymore. Maybe here and there you could see certain cases of players getting into a team by the suggestion of a coach, but that's not how scouting works anymore because every single detail depends on data. The only fair way to compare players and choose the right player for the team would be through a data analysis. Take, for example, our country's favorite sport, cricket. With the growing popularity of the Indian Premier League, through the player auctions you get to know about certain players who you would have not heard otherwise. Now you might be wondering what makes these players so remarkable when you see the bidding, sometimes in crores. The IPL franchises have a scouting department that monitors every league, big and small, to identify the top players they could acquire at auctions. Now how are these players judged? They are judged on various attributes, for example, the league they play in, the format, their longevity and also their consistency. If the scouted players do well in IPL, they could be a priority consideration to play for their national teams. New Zealand cricketer John Wright scouted Jasprit Bumrah for Mumbai Indians during a domestic T20 encounter between Gujarat and Mumbai in 2013. This deal with MI brought him into the limelight and eventually paved his way into getting selected for the national team. As we have discussed previously, all of these players have one thing in common. They have all played for IPL before they got into national team. And this shows how far we have come with sports data analysis. The same goes with football. Scouts used to be king in terms of finding players before with use of their wisdom and watching handful of game of each of these players. But today, they too depend on data analysts to provide them with insights on each of these players before they can scout them. So this was about the role of data analysis in sports scouting. You let us know if you would want us to decode any other technology in the comment section below. And to keep receiving more such updates, you know you can follow Scalar.